Do you not have any babies yet? I feel like you've been broody for like a hundred days. I'm seeing some eggs back there, but I don't know. What's going on with them? Oh, did I wake you up, Mater? Did I wake you up from your sleep? Oh, sorry, buddy. I know you were napping. Oh, big mama. What's up, girl? Oh, let's get some. Oh, and now you jealous, Olivia? Are you jealous? It's okay. What's up, guys? Oh, it's so good. Y'all have already had breakfast. We just want to let everybody check on y'all and make sure you're doing good. Growing so fast. I know you don't like being by yourself, but I got plans for you in the future. You gonna get a friend. Oh, big mama. Let me see them teeth. Let me see them teeth. Smile. Oh, gosh. So what's up, guys? Staying here from Rocky Creek. Welcome back to the homestead. We're down here in the garden. We had rain for like five days straight. And I think we got somewhere around a little over eight inches of rain over those five days. And today is the first day that there's a little bit of sunshine, but we're supposed to get some more afternoon storms today. And then after that, the sun's supposed to come out. It's going to get really hot, which even though there wasn't much sun, the garden already started taking off because of the rainfall. But when this sun comes out, this garden is going to explode. Uh, not only will the plants explode, but weeds are going to explode too, so we got to be prepared for that. But we're not going to be messing with weeds today, and we're not doing anything with the animals. i just let you see them so you can kind of see how they're doing. And so far, everybody's doing great. The big thing we're waiting on right now is Spotty has been broody for quite some time, and we're going to see if she'll hatch some eggs here pretty soon. But nonetheless, we're down here in the garden because we had a lot of rain, and although rain is really good, there's also some issues that can come with rain particularly with our tomato plants. Our tomato plants are still fairly small, but where they got so wet, the ground got so soft, some of those plants started to fall over. And so number one, it's not good stability-wise for them to fall over, so we need to fix that. But also the other thing is too much moisture can create some disease issues and some fungus issues and bacteria. And so we're gonna do what we normally do every year, which is we're gonna remove the bottom foliage from them so they can get good airflow dry out. And then I'm going to try a new way to support them, particularly when they're in their, their younger stages. And it's something that I'd seen online a lot last year, but I didn't want to commit to, to what they asked cost-wise. But I actually found something very similar at, believe it or not, the dollar store. So for $1.25, I'll give it a try. So let's go over here. Let's talk about real quick what we're going to do with these tomato plants, and I'll show you maybe the $1.25 hack that might work. So come on. So here's a row of the tomato plants and you can see where the ponding of water or some of the dirt has been washed away through it. Down here there's still quite a bit of ponding of water and as you can see this is just one example but I got this tomato plant is laid over and these leaves are literally just sitting in water and that is not good for tomato plants. But we're going to fix that quick and easy so let's show you what we're going to do. So before I do the trimming of the leaves, we're going to get these things supported up first because that's going to make it easier to determine what needs to be trimmed. And what I found at the dollar store are these sets of clips, which they have a small ones and some big ones. And the big ones is what I'm going to use, which is right here. And the idea is, is that the plant will go through this big part and this smaller piece will attach on to the fence wire like so, and give it some stability. Now, I'm not naive on tomato plants to know that my tomato plants will grow way thicker than what this is right here. But this will be a quick and easy temporary fix for right now. Now, a clip like this would work great for pepper plants, but tomato plants will definitely outgrow this and can probably cause some issues. But for the early stages, until they get high enough on the trellis where I can tie them off easier, this might be a good quick fix. So let's give it a try. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna support the tomato plant gently upwards not making sure we don't break the limbs and then i'm going to pick between a fork area if i get below this v i think it'll work there we go 
So this tomato plant's gone a little crazy. There's a lot of foliage I need to trim off, probably all the way up to here, but still has a slight bend. I don't want to force the plant up too straight, but you can see I have the clip on there. And in order to get the clip to work, you either got to get it close to a cross member right here or hook it in underneath the V of the plant so it has something to kind of hold it up. Otherwise, it just keeps sliding down. So as the plant grows up, ideally, I could have got it up to this rung right here and kept it more straight. But this is probably the best we're going to be able to do for right now. So like this tomato plant is much, much thinner than the others. So I will use a little one just for the short temporary time. To give it a little stability um, and then we will use a um, bigger one as the plant matures a little bit this one's already got blooms on it which is nice so we're just going to get the plant like that take the clip take it through there hook it on and there it goes gives a little stability now i would suspect that i could probably use this clip for about a week or two before it outgrows it and then we'll go back to our traditional tying method but this is a quick and easy fix when i need to when i'm short on time now of course you're probably thinking well stan this one ain't out of trellis what are you going to do no big deal so what i found in the last couple of years i keep in my garden all the time are these smaller fiberglass posts you can get them at most of your feed stores for very very cheap i, I could be wrong but i think they're like a dollar fifty a piece or something like that they're they're super super cheap um, and they hold up pretty well, but I like to use these as temporary supports for tomato plants. I use them as permanent supports for pepper plants. And I also use them as a good small way to support sunflowers until their root development gets big enough to self-support it if they're outgrowing and the ground's really soft. But these work out great for temporary supports for the tomato plants where maybe I've gone beyond where my trellis is or if they've grown out beyond the trellis and they're getting too heavy, Sometimes this will be additional support for some of those outlying limbs. So we'll pop this in and then we'll just hook the clips onto these. All right, so now that we've got all the plants stabilized, now it's important more than ever with how much moisture there is to get a lot of this foliage that's all down low out of the way. Um, and really, I'm gonna go until there's no leaves anywhere close to touching the ground. And all I do, take a clean pair of scissors with my super manly pink, black, zebra striped, I ain't sure, it don't matter, they cut. And all we do is I just come in here and I trim off all of these little pieces of foliage. From low on the tomato plant. Now you're probably thinking like that is super bare, but that's actually gonna be great. This will dry out really good. The plant will continue to go up and it's not producing a lot of energy to, to parts of the plant that it doesn't need where like it's starting to bloom and a lot more energy will go to our tomato production. So now we're going to thin these out all the way down through this entire row. So this is how much foliage we cut off of just these rows right here. And you can see what a difference that looks like. Now I also trimmed the lower foliage on these ones, but these ones are more straight and their foliage was much smaller as compared to this. I would say three quarters of what's there came from this one row right here. 
But I've been doing this for years and it has made the health of my tomato plants so much better. I've been pretty fortunate not to have major blight issues until really, really late in the season. But by then most of our harvesting was over with, so it wasn't too big of a deal. But I will do this numerous times throughout the growing life of my tomato plants, <clears throat> usually every couple weeks or so when I see foliage getting close to the ground. Now what you could do is if you wanted to, to make more tomato plants, sometimes you can take your cuttings here, put them in water, they'll take root and you can grow more tomato plants from your cuttings. But that's something that you can make a decision on if you want more of them. I don't need any more. And plus, sometimes I worry about if these may already be diseased, then I may start off with a diseased plant. But that is an option that you have moving forward. Now, although a lot of the rain causes maintenance issues with the tomato plants, which isn't big, one thing that loved all this rain is gonna be our melons. Look at how much this has filled up in only a week. I, I bet these melon plants, these Charente melon plants have doubled in their size. Uh, I've been trying to keep them within the container, but now we're at the point where they're gonna start to overflow the container and we're gonna let them run as needed. I'm gonna bring in some more wood chips and cardboard and get all these weeds suppressed that way. But this thing is gonna very quickly begin to take over this entire area, which is why I'm extremely glad I did them over here versus intertwining them with our watermelons again, because our watermelons right now, these two plants in particular have really started taking off. That one's a little bit slower over there, but it is growing but usually I had a huge intertwined mess versus right here, I can let these watermelons go and hopefully can kind of meander through all this stuff here. This is all sunflowers here, but I got a ton of weeds I need to get pulled out now as a result of all the rain. But overall, things are looking good. Here's something else that the rain has brought on. We're starting to get some of our first cucumbers starting to form. Uh, I would suspect looking up and down this trellis here, uh, there's probably every bit of 20 or 25 or so cucumbers that are starting to run and I'm having to keep uh, trellising this up so it doesn't get out of hand. So like for instance, I'll just take these pieces like so and I weave them through the, the trellis and then it'll just continue up its way like that and trying to keep as much of it off the ground as possible. Guys, if there's one bed though that I... I'm almost getting to the point I ain't 100% sure what to do with it is this one. Between the Swiss Shard and the Kohlrabi, I mean, this is probably, I mean, it's almost waist high now. And the bed is only like 12 inches deep. But check out this Kohlrabi starting to form up. I've never grown Kohlrabi ever. Here's a better one if I can meander through the jungle. But look at that. I've never grown Kohlrabi a day in my life. And it's kind of neat to see how they're, they're forming. So we'll see how those play out as time continues as well. The foliage on the beets are so much, it's hard to see how they're forming, but you might be able to see down in there. Let's see if I can get you a better look. There's some white beets. They're kind of pushing into one another. Let's see if I can find one individually for you. There you go. Look at that big old beet. So right now that thing's probably just smaller than a baseball, but we'll probably be harvesting these before too awful long as well. Our flower raised bed is starting to do really good. We're getting a lot of, I forgot the name of them, but we're getting a ton of these flowers now. If I can look it up again, I'll throw it in the description box below. But what's pretty cool is I got all these that are the same color pink or purple, if you will, except for I got this one light colored one right here. That's kind of interesting. Now what I'm most excited about that I've never grown before is this one, which is called coxcomb. And we got different colors starting to form. There's an orange. We got a red. There's another red and an orange and a yellow. And I've seen some videos on those that were super cool. So I'm kind of really interested to see how those go. And then over here, our marigolds are starting to form buds. So hopefully the marigolds will help with um, some of our pest issues we're having. Well guys, there it is. The humidity is super high. I'm starting to sweat. I've been pulling weeds in between video and stuff I wanted to, to show you. If your hands aren't dirty, you're not really gardening. Um, I'm not here to be a makeup, dolled up, super beautiful gardener. This is the perfect, beautiful life. No, you, you sweat, you get dirty and that's just the way it is. But the, the benefits and what you get from it and the rewards are so worth it. But guys, I hope this tip on the tomato plants 
helped you out. The garden is starting to really form up. It's really neat to see how much and how quickly this stuff can grow when you get some weather cooperating with you. I still do have this section that's way over here that I got to do something with. And I had an idea of what I wanted to do with it, but many of our pepper plants did not work out this year. If there's anything that I started from seed that just did not work out, it was our pepper plant. The, the pepper plants, they, they all sprouted, but it's like they just, they just puttered out. They, they stunted, they stopped growing. You know, they usually are slow growing, but I just did not have much success this year with my pepper seeds. Uh, but we got a plan. I got a great big open space over there. There was something that Mrs. Rocky Creek actually asked me to plant, which she doesn't ask very often. So I'm going to try to deliver. The seeds are already started and I'll get into that on another episode because I haven't, I've grown them once and I had eh, mild success but hopefully we'll have better success with the new setup and the new plan that I have with that. But guys, we should be full on harvesting here really soon with quite a few produce items and we'll bring you along for that. Hope everybody else's garden's going good and maybe you're getting much needed rain as well. But until then guys, y'all stay cool. Enjoy your time in your garden. We'll see you here real soon on one of our next episodes. Thanks guys.